a lot of students ask, why logarithms? Why do I need them? And here's a great scenario of why. Here's a formula for exponential growth functions. And uh, if you read the question here, what you realize is it says 100 bucks in a bank at 2% each year. And how long will it take for it to become 500 bucks? So what I do is I plug my values in. My A, my final amount, is $500 equals my initial value, which is $100. A stands for your, sorry, P stands for your initial value. And then 1 plus my rate is 2%, and 2% is 0 0.02, and the power is T. Now, we're trying to find T, and without logs, we can't find this. We can't figure out how long it would take. So that is basically the major reason of why. And so let's solve this. Let's actually find out what it is. But the major reason, again, is I want to find how long this would take. And you can't do it when there's a variable as a power. So we're going to divide this off. This is going to be 0 0.1, 1 1.2 to the t equals 5. And then what we do here is I'm going to rewrite this as 1.02 to the t equals 5. I just reflected it over. And then I'm going to change this to a log. So here's how logs work. You basically write the word log in front of this, and you switch these two. So I'm going to switch those two. I'm going to go 1.02, and I'm going to switch these two to the fifth equals t. And what I do is I simply write the word log in front, and log 5, and the base is now 1.02. I know it's kind of weird. Why do we use the word log? I don't have a good explanation of that. But they use the word log, kind of like sine, cosine, tangent. This is log, and inside of it's a 5. But the base is 1.02. It's like the descriptor, the type of. Kind of like sine, cosine, tangent again. So that all sine, cosine, tangents have a number inside. Except in logs, the base is your descriptor again. So anyways, um, now, so that's t. It's, but then you're like, oh, pff, that doesn't help me. How the heck do I find this value? That is true. That is also a little bit difficult for people. So if I actually want to find t, there's another property they developed after they kind of mess with this, they, they, they learn different kind of properties, and it's called the change of base formula. And basically, when you have this, you can rewrite this as the log of 5 over the log of 1.02. Now, these are stored in a calculator. They're also on charts. They're proportional. There's the way they you can make these and, and develop these and just look up these if you needed to. Uh, but if we use a calculator, and we, if we divided these two, your answer would simply be 81.27 years. That's a long time. At 2% to go from 100 to 500 bucks, you better be alive a long time. I doubt this is going to be very good at 2% to get you very far. But uh, yeah, so that would be how long it would take. So logs are, again, a way to solve these exponential growth and decay functions. And then with these numbers, what you do is you call this change of base, and you can solve them. Now, there are some other properties with logs which are re really important. You know, If you have, for instance, remember the idea of you have log and you have 3x, you can rewrite that as log 3 plus log x. It's a cool little property. It's just, it just phenomenally kind of works. It's kind of... It would take a while to explain why, but you can just separate it with the plus between. If you had, say, log uh, x over 7, you could make that log x minus log 7. So if you have a, di a division, you can make it a minus. And the last property, which is kind of cool, is if you had, say, log x squared, what they noticed is this can go out front and become 2 log x. These three properties also have special things that help you a lot with logs. But basically, logarithm chapters, it's about these three properties. It's something called condensing and expanding. It's about making equations and solving them. And then also you could have actual log problems that you have to solve. So say you have log x equals um, 4. What you first do is you go, oh, this is base 10. And to solve this problem, you go, oh, drop the log switch these two. So you switch the two, drop the log, and you have 10 to the fourth equals x. So x is equal to 10,000. And then you have log problems that you can solve. Because once you have logs, you have to be able to get back to exponents. So you can actually solve log problems, which become exponents, and you solve them. 
So this is the basic summary. And then you also get into something called natural logs, which are LNs, base E, log base E, and stuff like that. So the chapter is very basic once you get your understand all the little pieces. Um, I hope this helped. Good luck in your logs.